Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Ratner. Today I am joined by Gemma McFall, a pain recovery specialist and a Gallup certified strengths coach. Strengths is a personality profiling tool that helps us discover our greatest strengths so that we can understand why we think, feel, and behave as we do. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and we'll get back to you personally. And finally, you can reserve your place in one of my seminars, join my monthly membership group, or purchase any of my mind body guides, also known as the PDFs, at www.crushingdoubt.org. Now, without further ado, here is my conversation with Gemma McFall. Gemma, it is a pleasure to have you here, at almost more than any other interview, because this is a year in the making. <laughs> we, we connected earlier uh, last year and have been trying to set this up for some time. So I'm so glad to have you here with me. Yeah, and I'm so glad to be here. Thank, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And we, we've, of course, talked over this, this year when, when a lot of things were going on. Uh, we were in the heart of the pandemic. You moved to Dubai all kinds of things I moved, going on. I moved, I moved from Sri Lanka to Dubai. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, gosh. And in the meantime, you know, you're developing your way of thinking about these kinds of things and I'm developing mine. So we've been running simpatico in a lot of ways. And I think finding that we have a lot of overlap. So we're going to highlight that some in the interview, but the place that I like to start is what brought you to mind body work in general. Now, of course, we're going to get to the strengths tool and, and system and setup. But what, what happened for you that brought you into this world? It's almost always symptoms. I imagine that. Was oh, yeah. Case. And I, I remember. <laughs> yes, it, it, it certainly was the case. I had uh, lower back pain, progressively got worse over 10 years. Um, we lived in Dubai during this time. And then we relocated to Sri Lanka. And as I arrived there, the pain shot through the roof, as, as you know, you know, you've been there. Um, and that is when the whole mind body stuff came about because I was, I'd already done all the spinal injections and all the usual things. And I was waiting for surgery. Um, and then my insurance company refused the, the, uh, the, the surgery that I'd booked uh, because the surgeon was famous for doing, you know, surgeries that when without even meeting the client in, in this case. Um, so that sent me into another tailspin because I couldn't have the surgery I so desperately thought I needed. And then, um, and then somebody said, why don't you read this book, uh, which was the healing back pain. And by the second chapter, I was like, yep, yeah, this is it. This is, this is it. I'm on the right path. And, and that was it. But I didn't know about any of the Facebook groups. I didn't know about any of the podcasts, nothing. It was just that one book. Um, so then I just kind of turned to the tools I had and did, did my own little experiment on myself to see if I could heal my pain. And then I, I can't remember exactly how long. It was probably less than a year. Um, I was having like pain-free days. In fact, probably after about four months, I was having the odd pain-free day. So, mm -hmm. and now, now nothing. <laughs> Very exciting. And, and uh, you know, this is an experience that many people had, but I, I'm interested in something because you, you read Sarno and then you didn't feel the need to go checking it out all over the place. It, it just kind of spoke to you, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I didn't realize anyone else had written a book on it, but my, my personality type is quite impulsive. So mm -hmm. once I've had an idea of something, I just jump on it straight away. I don't question it. I just kind of go for it. And I think now I can see everybody else on these uh, groups asking questions. I, I can totally get why they're asking because they're probably more analytical than me, you know. But for me, it just it just doesn't light me up to continue to dig and dig and dig and ask questions. So yeah, it's kind of funny. I naively, blindly just went straight into it, and I was like, yeah, this person just knows everything, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna believe this, and I, I never I never questioned it. Well, you're Not bringing once. up you're you're bringing up a key point that's going to bring us to strengths, um, but it also speaks to how I think about things because I I talk about how doubt is so important to remove, and you just didn't have that much of it. And interestingly, it, it dovetails with what you talk about. The reason you didn't have it is because of who you are. So yes. my, my system is designed to work with all kinds of different people in terms of their levels of doubt, how they function. I tell people all the time, you don't have to change who you are. That's impossible. You're not going to be able to change who you are. I know, I know this. I'm speaking your language here. 
Um, <laughs> but it's so interesting that you worked that way. For me, I had a I had a combination that was similar to that. I needed it to make sense from a scientific and logical perspective. But once it did make sense and I could see okay. it, there was no going back. I I I couldn't I couldn't live without believing Sarno any more than I could fly to the moon by myself. It was just like very natural to me. Yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of times I ask people when they come on here, what led to your relief? And Sarno talks about accepting the diagnosis. Well, I think that not only were you able to accept the diagnosis, but I think one of the things that led to your relief is the personality traits that you brought to the table. They happen to fit. I think in that, what Sarno would call that 15 to 20% that's able to accept it. And you just went flying. Mm -hmm. So this brings me to the strengths tool assessment, assessment tool. I don't even know what to call it because you, 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 you know better than me and you'll talk about it. But when did you discover that in your process? Actually, years before. Uh, oh, because right. yeah, in in a I previous life, yeah, yeah, in a previous life, I was a HR oh, I do director. I remember this. I remember. Yeah, this. so keep, keep going. I've been I've been using this tool in the corporate world loads of times. You know, it, it's a personality profiling tool. So I would be using it on teams, managers, um, and and most importantly myself. I was put through it as a junior manager, and then I used it as I as I went up the ranks. Um, but what was really interesting, the last week we were in Dubai, typical TMS trait, I was working full time with two kids at home. I'd done my notice period while my husband was already in Sri Lanka. I'm packing up the house on my own. <laughs> and then uh, I had one week left. So I thought, oh, I'll get trained as a certified strengths coach. So I, the last week in the, the country, That's I got that. <laughs> it's crazy, right? And then I moved to Sri Lanka and maybe, I don't know, 25, 30 days later, I can't stand up. So Strength Finder was top of mind for me because I had literally just gone through the course. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't have any other tools, no podcast, no anything, I just leaned on what I had. And I was at the time learning to be a coach. So I used the coaches who I knew to coach me but not on the pain, but on things that were stressful, you know? And then I use Strengths Finder as the main thing. Wow. So, on myself. <laughs> okay, so as you were recovering, this, this, um, this assessment tool that you had run into in the corporate world, you started using that. Um, uh, do I have that right? That, that, was a big, that was a big part of your recovery process? Yes, because I don't remember if I read it in the book, but I my takeaway from the whole TMS, I, I literally skim read the whole book. I read word for word, but like, I got it. And I was like, right, I have to get back to living. So I was like, right. Um, and I realized uh, that when we, I'd gone from a corporate job where I was using all of my natural talents to being effectively a stay at home mom, which is great, but I wasn't using any of my strengths at all. So I wasn't being me anymore. I was just at home with like tiny kids at this point, there were six months and two years. So then I realized I have to do something to activate myself, to, to, you know, to put myself in the state of flow and find happiness and joy and all of these things. So I volunteered at a school, at my son's school. So for three and a half hours every day, I, I was using all my natural strengths and I had no, no pain for three and a half hours. Well, when I say no pain, I'm exaggerating a little bit because I was at the beginning of the journey, but I could see I wasn't thinking about the pain. Yeah. Then I'd come home and around lunchtime, the pain would start. So then I thought, what's the next strength I could use? What else am I not using? So uh, for example, I have learner. So then I would start learning extra things in the afternoon. And again, less pain. Well, so let, Does that let make me, sense? It makes a lot of sense. And I'm going to say more about how I see it making sense within the column system, because I think there's a particular thing. So remind me to, to talk about the power column and how, you don't have to remind me. I'll come back to it myself. But um, <laughs> ultimately, we're going to talk about how it's very similar to my power column to kind of go go towards the flow of who you are. But I don't want to get there yet because I want the viewers to get some orientation to what is this what what's in this assessment tool what what are the things that you find can you talk some about the different strengths that are out there that people have mm -hmm. am i allowed to talk about yours 
Uh, not only are you allowed to, I have a specific <laughs> question in here. Why don't we start there? Let's go ahead and talk. Okay. Let's talk about yours and mine, and then we'll expand okay. from there. Let's start with yours, and then we'll go to mine. Sure. So actually, it, it leads nice. It, it it ties in nicely with what we were saying about why I accepted the TMS stuff right off the bat. I have activator. So just to wind back a bit, there's 34 strengths, and you do an assessment over about 40 minutes, and it gives you your top five natural strengths. So these are the things you automatically do every single, in theory, every single day on autopilot without thinking about it. This is the thing you default to. So for me, I have activator is one of them. So when someone says, read this book, it will make you better. Okay. <laughs> like there's no thinking, I just do it. So that, that's an example of activator. Um, I have achiever, which means I like task lists. Um, I like getting stuff done, being busy, learner, which means I learn for the sake of the joy of learning, not because I'm actually going to be needing that, that thing. So mm -hmm. like, for example, at the minute, I'm learning to unicycle for no apparent reason other than I like to learn new things. Um, yeah. I'm working my way through the circus skills, but just, <laughs> just <'cause laughs> lion taming. Yeah, just, yeah, I've done a lot of them. <laughs> just because it gives me like learning something, going from nothing to, to kind of a master at it is amazing. But the minute I've got it, I move on to the next thing. So th this is an example of, yeah, it's an example of three used in the right way. Yeah, because, you know, uh, so I, I play guitar and sing and that to me, it's not, uh, listen, it'd be hard to master singing or guitar. But I could see some people getting to a certain level and being like, okay, on to the next thing. Whereas for me, and I do that some, but I also have part, and you'll probably be able to tell me where this fits in my strengths profile, but I also have a part of me that's like, okay, I love this, and now I want to just develop it more and more and more. It's probably, maybe that's Achiever. I don't know. Maximizer. Uh, what is it? Maximizer, maybe, yeah. Uh, take something, you're, take, you're taking something that's good and wanting to make it better yeah okay so in, in in the strengths assessment tool there's like a top five right that are kind mm -hmm. of how you profile what were your top five uh achiever activator learner uh communication and focus oh and sometimes discipline i've done the assessment a couple of times and sometimes discipline sneaks into the top five oh, well. i guess it depends on how disciplined you're feeling on that day <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, do you remember offhand what mine were? I do, because I have them written here. Because I knew I, you would ask me. And I actually wrote it down so that I could actually remember that. So I have it too. But go, I want you to go ahead and tell me what they are again. So yours are strategic, maximizer, ideation, futuristic, and achiever. Okay. Wait. It's really interesting because when you read me that list, first of all, it certainly rings true. But secondly, it especially rings true with respect to what I have been building here with this podcast and with this way of interfacing with the community and helping them. It's so fits with that. But I want to get your take on, on those strengths and what you see in me in that way. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I, when I got your results, I was I was a little bit uh, giggling because I always hear you on the on the podcast, and you're like, we need to make a system and we need to make a process, and you're very good at taking like, uh, com yeah. In fact, I think using your words, we take some a complicated thing and break it down into a da, 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 so that people can get there. And to me, this is uh, people with strategic are very good at seeing the end game. And they know the fastest way to get there. So when I saw that you had strategic, I was like, uh-huh, <laughs> he's using it. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the, the, your energy. And you can hear your energy coming through. That's achiever, futuristic. You know exactly where you want to be. You know where you want the listeners to be. And even like on the, the today, you announced at the beginning, this is where we're going to be heading, you know. Mm -hmm. And like, you, you, you know, you know where you're going. Um, like it's all mapped out, you see? Anyway, I, I, do, I do see it. And it's really interesting because it's not, you know, it's not the, the categorized way that I would think about it. But as you say it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that totally yeah. fits. Um, but you, go ahead. you know why this is? Because you can't see your own strengths because you were 
you've had them your whole life. Well, I imagine, I don't know if this is true. You have to tell me, Gemma, but um, based on my experience, I think one of the reasons people can't see themselves so well is that they start off almost assuming everyone else is like them. Right. Exactly. Because it's so endemic to who they are that they're, they don't see it as a strength. They're just like, so, so I sometimes interact with people and I'm like, why are you not strategizing here? Like, why, yeah. why, <laughs> why are you not thinking about it this way? Not that I do that critically, but it's just a place that I start. And it's been really important over the years to, to recognize different people work very, very different ways. But yeah, that's, that's the, one of the biggest things I work with clients on. So they'll come saying, I got this stress at home with my, let's say, husband. And then we look at who they are. And I'm like, oh, this is who you are. And straight away, they can figure out who their husband is. You know, and it's always... You, you marry your opposite. You're attracted naturally to the, the, the thing you don't have is what you're attracted to. And it's great for the honeymoon period. But then shortly after, that's when you're like, why can't you be more like me? And then like, <laughs> why can't you be more like me? And then, right. and then you try and change each other. And you either spend the rest of your life changing each other or one partner will just effectively give up and be like, fine, I'll be, I'll be who you want me to be. And I think this is largely where a lot of the uh, triggers for stress are. Yeah. I mean, from what you're saying, it sounds like one of the most stressful things is choosing to be who we're not, essentially. Yes. Does that sound right? Choo yeah. Choosing to be who we're not. Yes. And you know, when we did uh, your strengths, you were kind of happy. You were like, yeah, this, this is exactly me. It's not, I'm not going to learn anything from this. And then obviously you did. Um, but a lot of clients turn up and they say, I don't want these strengths. These strengths is what's got me into this problem in the first place. Mm. I don't like, like, for example, empathy, harmony. They don't, they don't want to be that. And right. so while they're fighting against it, and I can understand why. I see a lot of kind of chat on the Facebook groups of TMS personality traits as if they're a really, really bad thing. Yeah. Well, okay, so this flows into my thoughts about the power column, which I said I was going to come back to. And I, I think it is really, it's going to be important for my viewers to see this, but also just as you and I put our heads together about how we can collaborate on these things. I think it's really important to recognize that the power column is about acceptance of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's about a good relationship with yourself. Well, from a strengths perspective, I don't think you can have that if you're viewing your traits as bad. I also think that it can't happen if you're viewing your traits as something that has to be changed, particularly because I don't think people can change that. They can change a lot of things. They can change how they're thinking about something in the moment. They can change what it is that they do. They can change ways that they may limit themselves. But one of the things I love about the power column is it, it highlights the idea that you are who you are and there's nothing wrong with you. Now yeah. let's channel you into the world is this speaking your language yes so much you know the thing i like about this particular tool over and above any of the other personality tools is it's not a label and it doesn't put you in a box that of course it's labels but there's a one in 33 million chance of finding somebody with the same top five in the same order as you globally and there's what's the, what's the percentage what's the one chance? in 33 million that would have the same five. Oh, same top five in the same order. Oh, in the same order. Well, that's still yeah, astounding. But still, and, and then you think on top of that, you've got then your values and your upbringing and everything. Like there is nobody like you. That's so, fascinating. Oh my God. Yeah, so it's incredible. And it's, sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I guess when you think about the permutations of 34 traits and you, and having them in the exact same order, my it's, it's funny because I have a very um, mathematical mind, maybe not surprisingly to you, <laughs> no. uh, but it still surprises me that the number is that low, that it's mm -hmm. one in 33 million to have the exact yeah. same setup. And it's just five, yeah. five traits. Mm. Yeah, but it's, uh, it is really interesting because also I think the thing you missed off there is like you can't show up in the world as you if you don't know who you are, that, that's the other thing. And sometimes with strengths, I'll, I'll sit in the first session with someone and they have no idea. 
they look at it and they're like, it doesn't resonate at all. And we'll start to unpick. I'll ask them questions like, what do you absolutely love about work or school or whatever? And as they're telling me, I'm mapping to the strengths and I'll help play it back to them. Um, but like, for example, I'm working with a young girl who has restorative, which means she's really good at spotting problems and fixing problems. But everybody she lives with thinks she's negative. Oh, and of wow. course she's negative because she has restorative she's supposed to be in her top she's five she was right. born to be she was born to be a problem finder and a problem solver and the minute i said that to her she was like oh, yes i do that but i thought it was a bad thing because everyone's been telling me it's a bad thing you know and they're just yeah. telling her it's okay to be you but maybe teaching how to kind of dial up and dial down the different ones to serve you in the way you want well it also shows that you and I do some similar work in that we, we're working to change how people are thinking about the very thing that they see, but we're not trying to change it in ways that don't fit with what they see. We're trying to say, hey, do you see what you see and how this fits in this way? Yeah. And that's the kind of thing that can lead to shifts, where I think, whereas I think most people think, well, if I'm going to change how I think, I'm going to have to change who I am. Um, and, uh, and that gets them into a major doubt cycle. I call that level three doubt where they're doubting that they themselves can change. And it makes sense. You know, how would anybody think I'm, I'm going to change after being who I am all this time? And meanwhile, you're talking about a totally different uh, conundrum, which is people who come in and they, they don't fully recognize themselves. So, you know, often because they're in pain, right? They've stopped uh -huh. working. They've stopped sport. They've stopped everything. And they've forgotten, they've lost their identity. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's interesting too, because from a power column perspective, I would say that the symptoms are a communication that's honoring who they really are, but the way that they're living is not matching up in your model, I think, with their strengths. And in my model, it's not matching up with the core of who they are. We're basically saying the same thing. Now. Yeah, 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 definitely. So what have you found when people take in this new information because this, this is another overlap you and I have. We give people new information and then it changes the, the dynamic. I'm curious what you found when people take in this information. So I do this before any other techniques I use clients because I think when you're in pain and you're feeling broken and your confidence is gone, I think this is the fastest way to gain confidence so i always do this on the first at least one or two sessions so definitely confidence and um, optimism resilience um it's like a practical toolkit that they can immediately pull out and the other thing is they have like very quick aha moments as to why certain things are triggering them whether it's at work or at home or whatever like for example futuristic i had i had a futuristic um yeah, I think I had futuristic at like seven because I've done the full uh, report and I could only see a future with me in a wheelchair. I couldn't see any other future. So I was using my strength of futuristic in the worst way possible, but I was still using it. Do, do you see what I mean? So when you have these aha moments, then you can choose to yeah. not use your strength in that way and instead use it in a different way. There's a lot in what you just said that I, but I'm going to highlight two specific things. First of all, I think that aha moments are really important because not, not only are they really important because they're leaps forward and they're really powerful, but they're a sign of why what you do works and why what I do works because it's different than your typical learning. Aha moments consolidate a lot of information into a single moment where something clicks and it doesn't tend to unclick, I find. Yeah. <laughs> it, because it's like yeah. they, they see it with such a crystallized view yeah. that you, you can't go back at that point, which is yeah. good if you ask me, especially about the things that we're showing. So I just wanted to highlight that because I think that's one of the reasons why what you do is works so powerfully and what, why, what I do works so powerfully. Mm -hmm. We can get people true, full understanding, and that's, that's what an aha moment is. But, you know, as you were talking about this and, and um, getting these aha moments, you were also 
I think in some ways speaking to the fact that people are getting to think about not only who they are, but how who they are is getting applied. Yes. And so I, I, I have to ask, when you see my strengths, am I applying them well? <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably the achiever in me that's asking that question, but I, I'm, I'm curious. As, as a guest on your podcast, I would have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but now let's be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, because we, we've spoken before about these, uh, these things. I think you're using them. I mean, you're because you already, because of the line of work, you're so aware of who you are. I think you're using them unconsciously. Mm-hmm. So you've got them and you've always had them and you're using them unconsciously. So to tap into them further, it's to consciously, you know, say, right, I, I have to break through this next barrier. I'm right. going to ramp up this one. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Although you also said to me at one point in one of our conversations that I think it was because I'm an achiever, that there are ways in which I can really tire myself out because I can't stop the achievement train. And, uh, or at least that was something you speculated could be the case. And I said to you, well, actually, I, I've had to, I think I've had to develop this, Mm -hmm. but um, actually, no, I'm going to change this. Um, I've always been good at, at stopping and relaxing at certain points. But I don't tend to do it until I've gotten at least a certain amount of the work done. You know, like when I was in elementary school, I would come home from school and do my homework right away. Mm. And uh, one of my best friends jokes that one of the reasons his parents liked me is that they were like, yes, hang out with him. (laughs) You'll get your homework done. And it was true. Mm. Um, But I'm very good at enjoying myself once I've gotten a certain amount done. And at the same time, as life goes on and I get more responsibilities and more things to do, I have had to watch out for that. I think my self-awareness has allowed me to make those adjustments, but I see what, I see what you're saying about how this could easily run awry. I yeah. could, if I didn't have, I don't know what it is that's balancing me out there enough. Maybe it is the self-awareness, but um, something stops me from just always being like, got to cross something off my list. Got to do it. Yeah. Cause that's achievement as, as I understand it. Yeah, I, I won't say what exactly we were talking about when we talked about Achiever, but if there's a big thing that's happening that you cannot check off that list, that is a cause of stress for an Achiever, someone with the Achiever strength. Okay, so, I do have that for sure. Yeah, yeah. so it's, a, it's about digging deeper than just the surface level. So yeah, and you know, I've, I've met a few people who have... Um, I did a video with Georgie and I talked about this and a few people have gone on off and done strengths finder. And then they've spoken to me and they're like, yeah, but I don't get it. But you, when it's just a report, unless you work with someone that's going to hold a mirror up, you can't see what you can't see. If you already could see it, you already would have changed something. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the column system. A lot of times um, there are times where I, I show it to people and, and I think it's maybe because it aligns with who they are more and they just can soak it right in and run with it. And then there are other times where they need that mirror. They need, they need me to say, hey, did you see that that's doubt right there? Hey, did you see how you were getting powerful and then doubt came rushing in? Or did you see how um, you got your power reduced there, but you didn't know that you could boost it back up? We do very similar work. So we need to talk about how to collaborate in this. I'm going to get to that in a second. I do want to say, though, uh, you mentioned Georgie, Georgie Oldfield, and um, she is uh, a physio in, in England who connected us. So how did you connect with her? I'm just curious about that. And then we'll jump back to what I was just saying. So I joined um, Surfer. I did the, the practitioner training with Georgie. And then... Um, I don't remember why I did a presentation on the strengths for um, you know her community, and then we got chatting, and she's like, "You have to meet Dan," and then that was it. <laughs> she, yeah, she she connected us via email. So, yeah. I, I don't know if she's a connector or if that fits with her strengths, but uh, you know, uh, I'm grateful that that we got yeah. to meet that way, and she does really really great work. So I just wanted to make sure to mention her, especially since she was the point of connection for us. Um. 
Going forward from that, though, you and I have had some talks where we're starting to dabble in this about well, how can we collaborate on this? Because it does really feel to me, and I've had some people ask me this, um, a lot of people want to know how to break through in the power column, especially. And it feels like this is one way that that could be done, is to get a good view of the self in certain ways. And and it's one thing I love about it. I mean, look, it's called strengths, so it's not surprising, but it it highlights what is good about you, yeah. you know, good and unique, actually one in 33 mm-hmm. million. That's just insane. Yeah. Um, so we need to think about ways to collaborate about this, but I can really see how our work dovetails together. And every time we sit down and talk about it, I get all excited. So I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited to see where this goes. And, uh, for the, for the people who are watching, we'll keep you posted on, on what kind of developments that, that we have there. But I think I think I might need to develop like a specific power column seminar and have strengths be part of that. Mm-hmm. It'd be great. It's, uh, it's really exciting though, to hear you doing such good work with people, helping people sync up with who they are, because no matter what language we're speaking about it, we're really doing very similar work. Mm. Yeah, 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 totally. I listen to your podcast when I'm driving and I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. everything you're saying i'm like yes i know this is this is how conversations yeah. with jim and i go we, we're just yeah we, but even yes. you know i was thinking even because you have the emotions uh column as well mm-hmm. and even with this if you have once you know what your strengths are you know why you think about something and then it's the emotions lead on from that you see yeah. like so i even i can pick out people's emotions from listening to them talk about their strengths, you know? It's, it's really, um, it's really interesting. I was going down them all and going, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, I think, you know, ultimately, if we had to sum up what's the work we're doing, it is about helping people make sense of who they are mm-hmm. and ultimately feeling comfortable about that and, and able to, to unleash it in the world in some useful way to them or happy way. And so um, it's a pleasure having you here. And, and our <laughs> interview was a long time coming. Yeah. So, so worth it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Gemma, this is, this is great. I, I, I love, I love how we connect on this. I think there is some real simpatico about how we think about things and uh, we're going to sit down together and talk about how, how we can collaborate, but I wanted to thank you for joining me here today. Super. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thanks for having me. All right, Gemma. It was a pleasure. Well, I'm sure people can see how uh, Gemma and I really vibe together. We get very excited about these ideas because so much of what she's doing is is very similar to what I'm doing, but it's like this alternate version that I think can open up different windows. And what this shows you actually is, is, um, well, shows you a number of things, but one of the things it shows you is that the reason I talk about you developing your system within my system is think how many permutations of people there are out there. She said one in 33 million will have the same strengths profile. Well, we need a system that can work with all of those different people. For some people, the work that I do and when I lay out the column system, it just works and it flows. And for other people, we need to figure out the ways to channel it. And for some people, it works and it flows in certain areas and not others. Well, it's the same thing with the strengths assessment. She can help people figure out who they are and how to operate. And I thought it was really interesting just to reflect on this this idea that when we are being people who are not aligned with ourselves, it makes us unhappy. That's such a power column way of thinking about it. We have to figure out who we are. And then we have to be that in the world. To do that, we've got to accept the fullness of our trauma to realize what what have we been through. Ultimately, self-empathy in a way is recognizing who you are and actually liking it. And that can help you recognize what you've been through and what you need going forward. I really look forward to working with Gemma on uh, some kind of collaboration. We have something in the works. I will keep you posted on what it is. But it was a pleasure having her here today. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below. We'll get back to you personally.